Laura Manhattan for us on this uh, Trump trial. Let's bring Brian Claypool in now with more on this. The, um, the attorney who joins us with his analysis and um, anything, you know, Laura summed it up nicely what we heard on the stand from Ivanka today that stands out uh, to you. I they half jokingly said uh, as I was introducing Laura, it was a little calmer than what we saw from some of the other witnesses. But what would you take away from Ivanka, if anything? Hey, Carl, great to be back with you. My big takeaway is almost everything she said in court is irrelevant. Trump's lawyers made that argument. They objected. It's not relevant. Why is it irrelevant? For a couple of reasons. She was talking, Connell, about uh, financial statements back in 2011, 2012. That's beyond the statute of limitations. Trump's lawyers objected. Of course, this judge overruled the objection. The second reason why it's irrelevant is Ivanka Trump made it categorically clear I didn't prepare any financial statements. I didn't review any financial data. And I didn't furnish any financial data to Deutsche Bank. So in my opinion, her testimony should have been limited to maybe a few questions. But then again, this judge is a renegade. And in my opinion, this is using a courtroom to carry out a political ambush. Remember, this judge already declared before the trial started without hearing any evidence that the Trump uh, empire had committed fraud in its financial statements. So on the Deutsche Bank thing, there was this back and forth, you know, where they had an email that where Ivanka proposed lowering the required net worth for her dad under a loan agreement to um, two and a half billion dollars, I suppose. It was an earlier draft of the terms where it had to be three billion. But you're saying none of that really none of that matters. What is that? What is that? Let's let's talk quickly, Connell, about what you've got to prove on a civil fraud case, because that'll help your viewers okay. see how ridiculous this trial is. You've got to prove a, 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 a false representation. You've got to prove that it was justifiably relied on by somebody, the banks here, and then it caused damages. Nothing that Ivanka Trump Trump is talking about by lowering Trump's net worth to get the loan caused any damage. Trump, by the way, uh, Connell, he personally guaranteed, I think, the, the Deutsche loan through a, a an investment fund that he had. So there's no evidence in this case or anything elicited by Ivanka Trump or, or any of the Trump members that prove that anything they did caused a bank to sustain any harm. We haven't heard any evidence from the banks coming in to prove that they were harmed, that they weren't repeated on the terms of the loans. And in my opinion, mm -hmm. this case should have been tossed out of court because the state could, could not prove those elements of civil fraud. OK, um, while you're with us, Brian, we just got an alert in from the um, Republicans on the Oversight Committee in the House. And they have, it says, officially issued subpoenas for both Hunter Biden and for James Biden, the, uh, the president's uh, brother. And this is along with uh, another guy by the name of Rob Walker, who's a business associate, apparently. You, wh what would you say to that? And where do you think that whole situation is going? Well, I, I think it's important for the House Oversight to investigate in, on, on a deeper level to do a deeper dive of all of these transactions that Hunter Biden had with uh, uh, CEC Corporation. It's a Chinese energy company mm -hmm. and Burisma, all, all of the money that was sent to him. We have remember we had a WhatsApp text message, Connell, uh, in which, you know, Hunter Biden is saying to the CEC executive, hey, hey, don't forget about that money. My my dad's sitting next to you. I mean, ar I mean, arguably, that's that's potentially extortion. So so I think there needs to be a deeper dive on this. We, I, I think there should be a dive into financial records, too. Where did all the money go? Why was it sent to Hunter Biden and potentially James Biden? But look, at the end of the day, Connell, what's going to happen is lawyers for Hunter Biden and James Biden are, are, are not are going to file documents that saying that they're not going to show up and testify. And then how do you get how can you compel somebody to go testify to the oversight committee. I don't think you can because it's not a courtroom. You can't get a judge to compel them to come in. Right. Um, all right. We'll follow it. And that so just thank you for weighing in on that. That just came across there a few minutes ago. Brian Claypool with us on uh, all the developing stories here, uh, both in the um, Trump and Biden world. You know, we go back to Detroit just for a moment.